Hi everyone. Welcome to the next day of the 10 on 10 series where today and tomorrow we are going to discuss some match the following questions just to add a little bit of fun to our monotonous study routine one day each for path and micro but before that the homework that i gave you yesterday was on safety pin appearance after the yersinia pestis or the plague question that we studied and i asked you for the other causative organisms so for safety pin appearance one of course is yersinia pestis and apart from that it is also going to be vibrio parahemolyticus then we had the two burkholderias that is burkholderia mellai and burkholderia area pseudomelai and then we had the two organisms which cause genital infections that is hemophilus ducri as well as klebsiella granulomatis so all of these are going to show the safety pin appearance and as usual all of you give me a correct answer so now let's begin with match the following today is the pathology day so let's get going with the first one where we have all the tumor markers and just another revision because this is needed before the exam so the first one that we have is alpha fetoprotein we know that is positive in three tumors specially one is the yolk sac tumor which is not in the list the other are the two hepatic tumors that is hepatocellular carcinoma and hepatoblastoma so that is what i shall be marking it with alpha fetoprotein for hcc coming to the next is ca125 something that came in the recent ini ct exam also this is very important for the ovarian tumors especially the surface epithelial tumors and in that also especially for the serous ovarian tumors the next one is ca199 no one is messing up the 9 is going to get converted into a p so that is what we will match with the pancreatic cancer of previous year fmg question the next one is ca153 the 3 you convert it into a b so the ca153 comes over here for breast cancer the next one is calcitonin which is normally made by the thyroid so it is going to be the para follicular c cells which make it and any cancer arising from the para follicular c cell is going to make calcitonin that is medullary carcinoma thyroid further this can result in the formation of amyloid that is a cal amyloid of the calcitonin calcitonin type moving on to hcg and of course we talk about beta hcg which is going to be a tumor marker for chorio carcinoma the next one is catecholamines which i will be matching with cos again with pheochromocytoma which is right ahead of it the next one is going to be cea carcinoembryonic antigen which is for colon cancer a previous year surgery question and lastly immunoglobulins which are made by the plasma cells that is for the cancer of the plasma cell that is multiple myeloma so tumor markers table is always and always important that is the first match the following type that we had the second one is image related where you have this image from hematology and you have to match it with whatever is given over here if you look at the stain this is not the usual reddish pinkish romanovsky stain that we have so here we have a body which is not stained on romanovsky but stained on a stain called as crystal violet and that makes it the heinz bodies heinz bodies are seen in an anemia known as the g6pd deficiency anemia in which there is a lot of oxidative damage because g6pd is not there so the hemoglobin gets denatured and normal hemoglobin can definitely be stained on romanovsky stain but if the hemoglobin is denatured it cannot be stained on romanovsky stain and that is a heinz body the denatured hemoglobin the stain that has been used over here is a crystal violet stain apart from that if i look at the options over here i have pappenheimer bodies which are going to be seen whenever iron is more like in a case of sideroblastic anemia whereas the others like for example a cabo ring or basophilic stippling or hovel jolly bodies are seen with b12 deficiency which is known as megaloblastic anemia only for your reference this is how a hovel jolly body is going to look like it is also going to be single please note heinz body was also usually a single body but for heinz body we had a special stain called crystal violet because it was not stained on romanovsky hovel jolly bodies on the other hand which you see in b12 deficiency they are stained on romanovsky stain and hence you can see the beautiful reddish color apart from that the figure of eight appearance that we have over here will easily be matched with the cabering again seen in b12 deficiency or megaloblastic anemia moving on to another theme of questions where i've got you the needles or some these four which i'm going to show you one by one and you need to match the first one is a needle where of course i see a side screw and on seeing a side screw i know that is the salaz needle which i will be using for bone marrow aspirate just in case for completion it would have been a needle with the longitudinal screw then it would have been referred to as the clima needle again for bone marrow aspirate the next photo that we have over here is the classical t shaped needle known as the jamshedi's needle and that is used for bone marrow biopsy The next one that we have over here is the tube. Tube because one end of it is open and the other end of it is closed, and that is the classical definition of a tube. And if I have a tube, I can measure two things under it. What are those two things? Number one, I will fill blood up till here. Let's say I have taken five seven ml of blood, so I will fill it up till here. After some time, I will see that the blood has fallen. So this fall is sedimentation. So I can definitely measure how much has it sedimented. That is erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and all the red blood cells will pack over here. So this 
this is the packed cell volume which means in a Wintrow tube I can measure both PCV as well as ESR. The next one that I have shown over here is known as the Westergren pipette. I don't call it a tube, I call it a pipette because it is open from both the ends and I can obviously if it's open from both the ends I cannot measure anything over here in terms of packed cell volume. The only thing I can measure is how much has the blood column fallen down or sedimented so I can only measure ESR. Repeating, in the Wintrow tube I can measure both fall as well as the packing below whereas in West, Westergren pipette I can only measure the fall that is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Moving on to the next theme and that is going to be the renal tumors. So I've got a couple of options over here. You need to match the uh, history or the image with the respective option given. Here you have a young child, 10 year old. Now 10 year old child with some kind of renal cell carcinoma, I think anyway I've got my answer. They've given you a classical history of having blood in the urine and a renal mass which has been proved radiologically. There are some atypical cells. They have mentioned there is no blastemal element noted because in children I think more of Wilms tumor but they've ruled that out for me because Wilms tumor is nephroblastoma. It will show blastemal element which is not seen over here. So it is an RCC and that RCC is showing me a chromosome XP 11.2 problem that is pediatric RCC chromosome XP has a gene called TFE3 gene I used to tell you that toffees are for children so if the TFE gene is affected it is pediatric RCC which goes well with the clinical history also over here the next question over here is something as a doubt which someone had posted over telegram two days ago and hence I got it there's a 45 year old male patient with a renal mass along with that there is hematuria and along with that there is flank pain a classical triad of RCC. Now further I can see that there is associated hepatic dysfunction also that is noted. There is a mass in the upper pole of the kidney. The mass has of course sheets of atypical cells so they are thinking about cancer and those cells are going to be positive for stains of glycogen and lipid. Now glycogen and lipid look completely clear and that is exactly how the photo has also been given. It is a white cytoplasm. So these are clear cells even based on this much I know the answer is clear cell carcinoma which is the most common one but what else can I notice that because there was a hepatic dysfunction there is a cavernous hemangioma in the liver one organ affected more and there is another tumor or a mass in the cerebellum which has high vascularity they are basically talking about the VHL syndrome or von Hippel Lindau syndrome I've always taught you that VHL has three alphabets so it is chromosome 3 that is deleted and it is the clear cell RCC when it comes to the renal cell cancer that they're talking about but apart from that all blood vessel related things happen so like in the liver they will be talking about cavernous hemangioma a blood vessel tumor. In the cerebellum they are talking about a blood vessel increase as you can see over here. So hemangioblastoma is mentioned and that is how you pick up it is a VHL with VHL it has to be clear cell RCC. Moving on to the next one is this where we have again a 45 year old man with a renal mass with hematuria and flank pain. So everywhere the classical triad of RCC is mentioned. Now they are saying the patient has been on dialysis. Now the tumor that is associated with dialysis is papillary RCC and any papillary tumor in the body whether papillary RCC or papillary carcinoma thyroid will definitely be showing me these blue color calcium bodies which are known as the samoma bodies which we've revised at least a million times so I'll take a skip today. So yeah papillary RCC with hemodialysis is very very important. Moving on to the next one is where you have again the same triad which I won't repeat once again but over here you are seeing a raisinoid nucleus something that I'm doing for the third time in this series itself because last time you told me that any kind of RCC with that raisinoid nucleus let me show you that dark blue nucleus and a perinuclear whitish area perinuclear halo in RCC is known as a plant cell and plant cell is going to be seen with chromophobe RCC plants are always nice so that is why chromophobe RCC is going to have the best prognosis that we have whereas in RCC the worst prognosis that we have is going to be the Bellini duct RCC and we had learned as haw belly dance because haw for bad prognosis and belly dance for Bellini duct RCC moving on to the next theme of questions that you have over here is a 30 year old athlete died while playing football and I think that is more than enough for me to tell me that I'm talking about hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy and a classical banana shaped heart that we can see over here. They've asked you what is the image below and how would you correlate it with the mutation shown. So of course that is beta myosin heavy chain gene mutation which is the answer but what about the other options given over here. You can see that placoglobin mutation is going to be seen in what? Naxos 
नेक्सोस सिंड्रोम नेक्सोस सिंड्रोम इज अरिदमोजेनिक राइट वेंट्रिकुलर कार्डियोमायोपैथी दिस इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर नीट पीजी लेस इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एफ मूविंग ऑन टू टाइट एंड जेन म्यूटेशन दैट इज द वन सीन विद डायलेटेड कार्डियोमायोपैथी इन विच यू गेट टू सी द निंजा स्टार न्यूक्लियस एंड स्पेक्ट्रिन जेन म्यूटेशन इज टोटली ऑफ ट्रैक दिस इज समथिंग विच यू सीन रेड ब्लड सेल डिसऑर्डर्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट हेरिडिट्री सीरोसाइटोसिस विच इज अ रेड ब्लड सेल डिसऑर्डर द मोस्ट कॉमन जीन म्यूटेशन इन हेरिडिट्री सीरोसाइटोसिस इज द एनकायरन जीन म्यूटेशन हाउ एवर इफ इट इज अ वेरी सिवियर काइंड ऑफ हेरिडिट्री सीरोसाइटोसिस दैन समटाइम्स इवन स्पेक्ट्रिन जीन म्यूटेशन कैन बी नोटेड so this was completely off track okay done with this as well let's move on to the next theme of match the following which is to do with bullis disorder so today's themes i've decided to touch upon other subjects also like renal tumor the more important with surgery correlation bullis disorders of course dermapath and as soon as i read this i am talking about pemphigus now over here it could be pemphigus vulgaris it could be pemphigus foliaceus but of course over here i would need some other history also so let us look at the original histopathology what i'm seeing over here is of course the fishnet pattern they don't write fish net any more by the way because it's very obvious this is looking like a fish net they will write the other name of this immunofluorescence which is the reticular pattern and now i will have to see the histopathology when they are talking about pemphigus vulgaris everything is affected when they say which desmoglein is affected i will say desmoglein 1 and 3 both are affected whereas in pemphigus foliaceus it is usually the first first things that are affected like antibodies are against desmoglein first one which is the layer that is going to split it is the first layer of the epidermis which is going to split and that is the stratum corneum so the split is going to be below the stratum corneum which is known as subcorneal so desmoglein first and the first layer will split that is pemphigus foliaceus whereas in pemphigus vulgaris antibodies are attacking both desmoglein 1 and 3 and you can see it is above the stratum basal that the split has occurred so it is a supra basal split and i can see the basal layer is standing as it is so that's a small little homework for you which i've already told you that pemphigus as well garis is showing you what appearance that name needs to be mentioned and that similar appearance and those similar cells are also seen in a necrosis in general pathology so that is the homework that you're going to write a small little typing that you have to do so i've got my answer fishnet is seen with pemphigus now if i go to the other one if they say ribbon candy appearance on immunofluorescence is seen with you can see the ribbon candy is something like a linear pattern and that is classically seen over here amongst these options with bullis pemphigoid let us see the histopathology that you see in dermatology over here it is not in the epidermis there is no stratum corneum basal like pemphigus the entire epidermis tends to get split off so this is going to be below the epidermis we call it a sub epidermis dermal split because over here bullis pemphigoid antigen is affected what is bullis pemphigoid antigen it is a type of a hemidesmosome so i realize that in pemphigus it is actually the desmosomes and the desmogleins that are affected whereas in bullis pemphigoid it is actually the hemidesmosomes that are going to get affected and now the pattern that you see is the ribbon candy or the linear pattern which is your second homework for the day that if i talk about a similar linear pattern on immunofluorescence which kidney disorder shows you that i'll give you an example it is rpgn so tell me linear pattern is seen in rpgn type 1 2 or 3 that's the second homework moving on to the next image that you have again of immunofluorescence of bullis disorders even by ruling out i think you'll come to it but here you see a small little mountain which is known as the tip lesion and this tip lesion is seen with dermatitis herpetiformis that's how we always called it in the rapid revision videos dermatitis herpetiformis or dermatitis herpetiformis will tell you that it shows the tip lesions and here you have you can see this mountain of inflammatory cells and you can see this mountain or tip that is formed on immunofluorescence that That shows the classical deposition of IgA antibody seen with dermatitis herpetiformis, and the question that you correlate it with in dermatology and medicine. It is associated with the GI disorder, that is celiac disease or gluten sensitive enteropathy, because in celiac disease also it is IgA antibodies that are formed. Of course, that is an intestinal disorder, but over here the same IgA will attack the skin, and in the skin it will cause dermatitis herpetiformis. Moving on to one question more for NEET PG students. students which is this written over here haley haley disease just a quick flash card that i found on the internet which i've got with the source also which is very beautifully written haley haley disease was actually discovered by the haley haley brothers and this is seen in the folds of the body like the neck the axilla the groin you can see it in the image what you get to see in dermatology is that the entire epidermis looks as if it needs repair like as if it's a wall in some house which is totally broken off and you need repair badly that 
that is known as a dilapidated condition dilapidated brick wall appearance is seen in the cells of epidermis and that is haley haley disease something that could come as simple spotter or a one liner that dilapidated brick wall appearance is seen in which bullis disorder so repeating once again pemphigus shows you fishnet pattern bullis pemphigoid shows you the linear or the ribbon candy pattern dermatitis shows you the tip lesion and haley haley shows the dilapidated brick wall appearance coming on to the last one that we have for the day is of course i had to wrap up the match the following with something to do with stains in pathology without which every session is incomplete so what is the stain firstly what is this picture it's a dumbbell shaped body so it's an asbestos body and why is it looking blue because asbestos fiber is always covered with iron that is why it is also known as the ferruginous body now the special stain of iron that we have over here is of course going to be prussian blue so yeah that i'm easily going to mark but what about the rest let's start from 1 to 10 the first one is the albert stain which is done for volutin granules in carini bacterium diphtheria the next one is the oramine and the rhodamine stain that is a fluorescent stain for mycobacterium tb the next one is the kinyon stain which is known as the cold zn stain remember we did kkk so kinyon stain is a cold zn stain for coccidian parasites the next of course warden starry silver stain which no one can forget is for h pylori very important for gastric pathology apology pass for a lot of things but most importantly for glycogen storage diseases because we know glycogen is pass positive and diastase sensitive everything else that is pass positive will always be diastase resistant but pass is pass positive or glycogen is pass positive and diastase sensitive moving on to congo red it's of course for amyloid we cannot forget the apple green birefringence bl shovsky stain is important for neat pg students b for bl shovsky b for brain tissue so this is a brownish blackish stain used for brain or neural cells you have seen this stain being used in alzheimer's disease prussian blue is of course known as the pearl stain for iron von cosa we discussed a few days back is for calcium remember cosa gives a kala color to calcium so it gives a black color to calcium and oil red o is of course going to give a reddish color to oily material and that means it's a stain for lipid or fat another stain for lipid or fat is going to be the sudan black bee well with that we are done with the match the following for the day but yes your homework i hope you remember the first homework is where you're going to tell me about that row of dash appearance that you saw in pemphigus vulgaris and a similar appearance that you saw in a necrosis also and homework number 2 is where do you see the linear pattern of immunofluorescence in which type of rpg and is it noted in so i'll be waiting for the answer then i'll meet you for another match the following quick session tomorrow in microbiology so study well